You're listening to the Journey to Launch podcast, how to earn more money and live in abundance with Amanda Abea. T minus 10 seconds. Welcome to the Journey to Launch podcast with your host, Jamila Souffrant. As a money expert who walks her talk, she helps brave journeyers like you get out of debt, save, invest, and build real wealth. Join her on the journey to launch to financial freedom in, in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, 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 journeyers. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Journey to Launch podcast. I'm so excited to have you here with me on this podcast to learn some more tips, tools, and to get some resources for you to continue on your journey to financial independence. I'm excited to be talking to Amanda Abea today. Amanda and I are going to talk about things I love talking about, which is how to earn more money, how to set up your life so you're living in abundance and not scarcity. And through her own fascination with money and wanting to learn more about how to create healthy financial habits, Amanda set out on her entrepreneurial career as a freelance writer, but then later pivoted to teaching business owners how to earn more. She's been featured in Forbes, Huffington Post, Business Insider, and more. She's a Latina millennial money expert, and she's created a online community where millennials can learn how to make more money and also enjoy their financial journey. Amanda and I talk about a lot of things in this episode. We talk about how she doubled her income in one year, how she changed her own mindset from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset, why she wants to focus and help people focus on earning more and not so much cutting expenses, how to get rid of old money beliefs and why taking personal responsibility and having commitment is one of the most important steps you can take to improving your finances and so much more. So I'm super excited to get into this conversation with Amanda. But before you do, just some housekeeping. So if you are enjoying this episode, please don't forget to share this with your family and friends. Share it on social media. This podcast can be listened to basically anywhere. And so to find out where you can listen to the podcast, you can go to Journey to Launch dot com slash episode 79 that's actually the episode show notes for this episode to get show notes but then it also lets you know where you can listen to this and you can also send that link to any of your friends and family who want to hear it also you can post it on your social media tag me i'm journey to launch on all platforms on instagram twitter and facebook If you're ready to actually take your journey to financial independence and freedom to the next level, I invite you to check out the Journey Art Launch Club. That's my premier membership community where we are having lots and lots of fun. I'll share more about what some updates that we have going on in the community at the end of this episode. But in the meantime, if you want to check it out, go to journeytolaunch.com slash launch club again we'll be sharing more about what's going on all the exciting classes and date up to date things that we're doing in the launch club will be shared later in this episode at the end of this episode i'm also going to be reading a review from apple podcast you know i always ask you guys to leave a review if you're listening to this in apple podcast so i'm going to just read one at the end of the episode also so without further ado let's get into this amazing conversation with amanda Hey, journeyers. I'm really excited to have on today's guest, Amanda Abea, because we're going to be talking about something that I love talking about, which is mindset and money and earning more money, because this is something I think we all can use a bit of help with. And Amanda is pretty much an expert at this. So, hey, Amanda. Hey, thanks for inviting me to come on to talk about one of my favorite topics ever. Yeah, because I feel like this whole mindset and just the psychology behind money is something we should be talking more about in the personal finance space. And I know, you know, there are, people do talk about it, but not as much as maybe you, we hear about cutting back and frugality and kind of the scarcity mindset. And my goal is to allow journeyers, to allow listeners who are, who's here, who are hearing this content to feel very equipped and empowered to earn more in their lives. And, you know, I know this is a big, big passion for you too. So I just wanted to hop right in. We'll get into your story a bit, but For you, how, I mean, before we started to record this, you told me that you had the biggest breakthrough year in 2018. um, And that was based on like mindset and psychology. So how did you do that? I mean, I know that's going to be a lot, but just like 
quick overview of how that happened for you. So you actually brought up an interesting point. So my gripe with the personal finance community is that it's so focused on scarcity. And I remember going to an event, I started following Grant Cardone about 18 months ago, but I went to an event in July that he did here in Miami and he said something that blew my mind. And he's like, you people in the personal finance space have it all wrong. You're spending 95% of your time managing expenses and only 5% of your time on earning, it should be reversed. And when I heard that, I was like, oh crap, he's right. Like we totally have this backwards. And up until that point, you know, having come from the more traditional finance space and also having immigrant parents, it was all about like scrimping and saving and there's only so much and you can't do the things that you want to do and deprivation, you know, and there wasn't as much of a focus on earning. And this sort of like light bulb moment went off from like, oh my God, he's totally right. And within 30 days, I went from making like eight, $9,000 to making almost $30,000. Whoa. <laughs> so we're going to get into how you did that and how you, because you already from that basis seem to have a positive mindset around earning, but you also then seems like took it to another level. So I want to dive deeper into that. But let's just hop back into your story a bit. So you mentioned you are a daughter of immigrants. Where is your family from? Where are you from? Both my parents were born in Cuba, and they left um, as children. So the Cuban Revolution happened in the 60s. It became a communist dictatorship. And my grandparents um, were like, we're not raising kids in this. (laughs) So uh, they got out. There's some crazy stories about how they got out. Um, And so that future generations could just have more um, opportunities. And the United States was the place to be. I mean, it was the land of freedom. And you know, honestly, it just gave me this really unique perspective uh, in a couple ways. So like on, on the one hand, you know, because your parents flee communism and they lost everything and your grandparents did too from one day to the next, when they literally have to flee their home country, there's a lot of fear, right? So there's a general mistrust of institutions, you know, like the government and banks, <laughs> which on the one hand um, is good. Because you're like, these people aren't my friend. I got to go figure stuff out on my own. They're not looking out for me. So that was number one. And then number two, on the flip side of that, um, it does make you more risk averse too. So one of the things that I've had to really do in order to really take my mindset to the next level, and I think everybody has to do this, is really look at, okay, what did I learn growing up? Because we basically learned everything about money by the age of seven anyway. You know, and what things, you know, serve me and what things don't serve me. And one of the things I had noticed was like, wait a minute, I live as if I went through the Cuban Revolution myself and I didn't. I was born in the United States. I don't have all these problems, you know. I have this like world of opportunity open to me. You know, even with things like the Internet, it's so basic to us. But there's so many countries that don't even have access to stuff like that. And I'm here complaining. This doesn't even make sense. Right. And I I love that perspective. And like you, because my my family also immigrated here and I was actually born in Jamaica. For me, it's like that same same concept of, okay, you know, coming from a place where there we were looking for more opportunities. My mom was looking for more opportunities and now being in a position where we have way more than our parents did. And so, like, what are we going to do with that? And also not letting their baggage that they had and that they instilled in us and not by intention most times. Right. But just like that mindset, how do we create our own mindsets around money and different from maybe what our immediate circle. So like what we see within them. So whether that's family and friends, because oftentimes we're, we're only replicating what we see because we don't have maybe access to other ways, except for now with the internet and social media, there is almost no excuse to find a different way to think and to be because we can make these connections and and see that there's another way to go about things. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of the mindset stuff too, is realizing like you really have no excuses at all for anything. Really. I think oftentimes what happens is people, and I felt, you know, I did it right. And I think that's part of the reason why it took me much longer than it had to, to finally understand these things. It's so easy to find other things to blame, right? Oh, the economy, the government, my friends, this, that, or whatever. But if we really take a second to think about it, 
does anybody ever notice that they are at the center of all of that? Like they just happen to be right in the middle of all this garbage. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's not a coincidence. It's because we're creating it. Um, and it's because we're not taking personal responsibility. And once you take on a new level of personal responsibility, the doors just like fling wide open. Right. And, and really, so if the first step is what? So someone's listening and they're saying to themselves, well, I want to create a better relationship with money. I want to earn more money this year and throughout my lifetime. What's the first step? Is it personal responsibility? I think it is, right? I used to say, oh, go figure out what you learned about money as a kid. But then what I realized is sometimes when you do that, what ends up happening is you just find more reasons to blame other people for things. And it's really hard for you to get out of that. So I think the first thing we need to do is take personal responsibility and commit to it. Because lots of people, I mean, I hear every day, you know, every week we get meetings coming in. My associate coach and I hear stuff like, oh, I really want to make more money. But they ain't serious. They're not willing to do what it takes. You know, I won't call them out on it if we feel it, you know. Um, so I think that's a part of it. It's just like really committing. And I think part of what makes it easier to commit is to commit to your desires. So last night, a friend and I were on the phone and I just had this idea. I called her up and I'm like, Hey, do you want to just like jam for an hour on like all the things we want to do in 2019? If money were no object, why don't we have conversations like that? Why is the conversation always about like, Oh, I don't have this, or I need to blame so-and-so for that. Or I don't want to do what it takes to get this. I feel like if we kind of took personal responsibility and realized we can have whatever we want, we just have to commit to it, then we would be, people would be having like way different financial lives. They wouldn't be getting stuck in that victim blame mentality. They would be seeing, you know, quantum leaps. I made more progress in a year than I'd done in the previous seven. And the only difference was I took on a new level of personal responsibility and I said, okay, number one, no more excuses. Right. I have no one to blame here but me. And number two, um, I think going into the second step is getting rid of the baggage, clearing it. I think that's like peeling an onion. You're kind of never done Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm because you because you always discover new ones, you know, and when you reach new levels, like old baggage comes up. So, you know, being aware of it. I think a lot of people are like, yeah, eradicate the baggage, punch fear in the face. But I think it's more of just like becoming aware of it and then deciding not to take it on for yourself. And and again, that is a level of personal responsibility. Um, So it's so interesting because if people just saw what was possible for them and they committed to that and they decided, okay, no more excuses. This is what I want out of my life. Life costs money. That's just the way that it is. Now let me go figure out how to make the money. We would see a much different society. Right. And I think, too, some people think like the shift, maybe they don't recognize how it's not it's simple. It's not it may not be easy because if it was easy, everyone would do it. But it is a simple shift. It is like naming maybe the behavior and calling yourself out. And just that, just like by doing that will put you at a better footing and a better level than if you kind of waddled in this kind of whole for yourself Um, yeah one of the things that you said which you know I see like we said we both are in personal finance space is that this this attention to expenses and I think for some people like that might be especially for people who who do have resources not available to them well they think that are not available to them right or if they are so out of control with spending right it's like the immediate quick thing to do is to look at your expenses and to just cut back that is I think a good first step but if you are going to like if if there's a certain lifestyle that you want and this have to be overly like expensive, right? Like, so this is not to say you can't want more in your life and want nice things. You can, but if you want to, to me, create like a sustainable like lifestyle in which you can enjoy certain things that you just want to enjoy, like, you, you know, so you don't want to just uh, live off the bare minimum, then yes, focus on expenses up to a certain point. That's reasonable, but then focus on your income right? Like income should be like one of the driving factors. And it is a driving factor in building wealth and creating a sustainable life that you enjoy. I agree. And I think there's so much of a focus. I mean, I've, I've done private sales coaching intensives, for example. And I always seem to notice that the ones who struggle most in terms of asking for money are the ones who deprive themselves of spending money on themselves. It's not a coincidence. 
-hmm. you don't even think you're worthy enough to like go get your nails done every once in a while how are you gonna go ask someone for two grand Right. See, this is so kind of opposite from what I like. So I'm in the first financial independent space. You know, I have like one foot in the door um, in that like l- world and then one foot out in terms of just like general personal finance and then just the way I operate. And I come across a lot of people in the space who do operate from more of a I'm going to cut back and save aggressively, which I agree on to an extent. Um, and so a lot of the like blogs that I'll see or just like the content around it is, you know, looking at every single penny, which again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that if you're listening, depending on where you are financially, but it's also kind of like from a scarcity mindset that if you're not, you know, you have to like look at every single thing and you can't, spend in whatever in these areas that make you happy because then it's like overindulging or you know it's like over consuming and that's not a good thing and then so when it turns around to maybe investing in yourself whether that's you know through a course or maybe you know maybe there's something you want to do like as an entrepreneur that's a, that's harder to do because you're so focused on one side of the equation and not the other side right and i think you know people you know we like to go to extremes you know it's one thing or the other but for me personally Sure, I want financial independence. Do I want to like struggle for 10 years to get there? No. So I'm just going to go focus on making a ton of money. It's just so much easier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All so- right. So let's talk about making money. So we're, you know, we set the stage, right? Now people are like, yep, I get it. I should be focused on making more money. But how do I do that? So I know you help entrepreneurs do that, right? So we're going to talk about more like how entrepreneurs could do it. But what about like people who are not necessarily, you know, they don't have their own business they work a nine to five or they have a boss like how can first of all anyone make more money and then we can break it down to like an entrepreneur versus like someone who's in a nine to five so this is going to get a little trippy and heady but I think a lot of it it comes down to energy what I see a lot of people doing and this actually ends up backfiring in a lot of ways is that they try to become indispensable at their job so they're like if I do everything then they're just going to give me a promotion or a raise no what ends up happening is you're overworked and underpaid because they don't respect you So I think there needs to be a mindset shift going on there, which, you know, has to do with boundaries, you know, setting boundaries with your boss. I think it has to do with asking for more money. I think, you know, if you ask and you're not going to get what you want, go find another job. I think it really just comes down to people thinking that they're worthy of it. And it also comes down to thinking that not only are they worthy of it, but there's tons of opportunity and there's tons of money. You're not chained to a job that's not going to give you a raise. Just go find another one. Mm -hmm. I see that thought process. I think for some people, it's just like, wait, it's easy for you to say, go find another one, but maybe it took me forever to find this one. Or I don't see that there are opportunities in my space. So it's not Mm -hmm. as easy for me to do that. And I get that because I used to be a recruiter. And I think one of the reasons it has taken me so long to kind of get it together was because I did have that sort of mentality of, oh, okay, well, you know, the traditional job and the trajectory and I get a raise when they tell me to get a raise. But then I'm just going to tell them what my what my brother did. Um, my brother walked into a job interview. It came to him. He didn't go out looking for it. He made his own website, his own resume. It wasn't even LinkedIn. A recruiter approaches him. My brother walks into the meeting like he owns the freaking place and ends up doubling his salary from his previous job plus getting a bonus. It all comes down to energy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I can. I definitely see that. And so the energy to have confidence that you deserve more, you, it's okay to ask for more. Yeah, people buy confidence. And it doesn't matter whether it's you being an entrepreneur or whether it's you at a job, people buy confidence. I think what ends up happening, and ultimately, this comes down to Um, a fear that there isn't enough money in the world is people don't respect themselves in the workplace. So then why would your boss or your manager or your employer or anybody else respect you and give you more money? It just doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. And then I also see just like personally, like this comes up a lot because if I'm afraid to spend money, you know, whether that's on a service or investing in myself, then then again how can people how can I expect people to invest in me right because it's like I can't it's hard for me to ask people like say it's hard for me to ask people to spend money in this area then then it feels like how can then they have the confidence to go out and 
ask for money themselves. I don't know if that <laughs> made sense. Of no, I make that up. Sense. You know what I mean? Like, I, I see it all the time, and I used to struggle with it. It was a matter of like deprivation. Let me deprive. Let me sacrifice. Let me do this. Well, then it was actually really hard to go ask for money when I did that because I didn't see myself as deserving of it. Or if you believe money is like asking for more is being greedy or you are being ungrateful and like that also can stop you right because if you if you feel bad because you're asking for more then you're not gonna you self-sabotage you're not gonna ask for more you're gonna undercut your prices or you're gonna uncut your services in your nine to five because you feel like if you go in there like your brother did and ask for a double amount then you're gonna be seen as greedy etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah, with, in the case of my brother, it's so funny. I'm like, my mom asked him, she was like, how did you learn how to do that? And he's like, life costs money and I want to do stuff and it costs money. It's not that deep. <laughs> 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 he's like, food costs money. I mean, this is not that deep of a conversation. <laughs> um, but, you know, for other people, it is a lot more emotional and a lot deeper. And there's a side of this that really triggers people. And the reason it triggers them is because they start seeing how they themselves have self-sabotage and it's not a pretty thing to do, right? So there's an amount, if that's what it is, where it is more emotional, there is a lot of shadow work that needs to be done. And in that taking of more personal responsibility, it's not, it's going to suck, right? Because you're going to realize how you put yourself in the situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. So there's a period there's a period where it's really going to be triggering and really emotional and it's going to be really uncomfortable. And I think going through that period, just reminding yourself of like, listen, you did the best that you could. OK, you were you were operating under false information and false assumptions, because the reality of the situation is that when it comes to money, the thinking of the world is broken. Okay, and so let, let's keep going kind of deeper into that, though. The existing construct for money that most people think is what? And how is it broken? Uh, there's scarcity. There's lack. Some people make all the money. Some people don't. If so-and-so is making this money, then I can't make that money. Um, an honest day's pay for an honest day's work as if, you know, if you make passive income, that somehow makes you a bad person. You know, there's so many cultural constructs around the idea of money. Take um. The greedy one, right? Like money is the root of all evil. That's not even what the Bible says at all, right? It's just, been, it says for the love of money is the root of all evil, right? And that really comes down to an understanding that if you make money your God and you think your security comes from money and not God, you're going to run into some problems. But that in no way is the same thing as saying if you want money, it makes you a bad person. Mm. Right, right. I love that. And let's talk a little bit more about your story, kind of like how you came to be this confident with your money. I know you mentioned the Grant Cardone um, conference and what he said. But before that, how did your journey into getting smarter with money start? Uh, I started in 2010, graduated, great recession, couldn't find a job, spent a few years blaming the recession for my misfortune, had to get over that one. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh my God, I need to figure this out because if I'm going to live, you know, I need to deal with money. This is something we have to deal with every single day. So back then it was really basic. It was starting with like Susie Orman books and Ramit Sethi. Ramit Sethi actually just did a, a recent interview. I think it was with Lewis Howes for the 10th anniversary of I Will Teach You To Be Rich, which was amazing where he did talk about stuff like, well, you know, what happens if you're making really good money? Most of the financial advice out there doesn't apply to you. Right. And I was like, thank you, Ramit. Someone's talking about this. <laughs> right? yeah. um, but 10 years ago, you know, um, I started with that. You know, I started with a little blog that was called Grad Meets World. And it was for completely selfish reasons. I was just trying to hold myself accountable. And I've always been the type of person that I process things through writing. That's when it makes more sense to me. That's when I can process through emotions and thought patterns and things that I'm learning. And I started picking up little freelance gigs here and there. And one of my clients at the time had all these like open assignments uh, for personal finance. And I was like, I know nothing about money. What if I get paid to learn about money? That mm -hmm. sounds like a good deal, right? So that's what I did. And back then it was like, I don't know, 10 bucks an article or something like that. Um, you know, and there's big ahas that have happened throughout this journey. So that was one of them. 
And I made like 10 bucks and I'm like, this is the best 10 bucks I've ever made because I made it doing something I love to do. And then another aha came two or three years later, 2000, end of 2012, um, where I was working as a recruiter. So I worked for an agency. I was helping to place people uh, within jobs within Fortune 500 companies. It was hard to quit that job because you're being drilled every day with you know, go to school, get a job, benefits, upward mobility, all that kind of stuff. And none of it really ever gelled with me, to be honest, but I was just doing what I was told to do. And I was scared because I'm like, no, 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 this is where security is. And I have this day, if I want another job, I have a database in front of me every day, I could just get one of these jobs. And one day I'd done 10 job interviews with people who'd all been laid off the week before. Meanwhile, on the online space, because I'd been blogging for a little while to hold myself accountable, I started seeing my friends, many of who were in the fin, who are in the FinCon community. This was before I ever went to a FinCon, um, and they were starting to quit their jobs, and they were making decent money. They were making more money than I was mm. at, at that full-time job, and I was like, "Oh my God, I think the economy has changed forever. All these people I'm interviewing, my boss." all these companies, and again, this was end of 2012, so it's been a while already, they're all like waiting for things to go back to how they were before 2008. That's not going to happen. And as soon as I had that realization, um, I hired my first coach and quit my job six months later. Hmm. And what I'm hearing is that you invested in a coach, so I'm sure that costs money to oh, help yeah. <laughs> you, right? Like, So it's that part of, okay, I'm going to actually like, take this seriously and invest in myself to to kind of go and take that life that I'm dreaming about yeah I mean I was here telling people to go get regular jobs and I didn't even want one myself I was so out of integrity and out of alignment and that's another big aha that I had later is when you are in integrity and you are in alignment for me that's not a regular job for someone else it totally is I employ people you know, <laughs> it's not like I'm anti-job, you know, I, I'm an employer. Um, it's just that for me personally, that wasn't what I desired and I wasn't living from a place of integrity. And I think that happens to a lot of people too, is they're not owning up to what it is that they actually want to do in life because they're scared they can't do it. And I know I was in that space for a long time. So that was, that was another big aha in that moment. And then I would say the other big aha came... I've had, I think it started coming maybe two years ago. I'd been freelance writing. I mean, major banks, Discover, Wells Fargo, all these guys. And I have to give, I think this applies whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're working for someone else. I think you always have to be a little bit ahead of the curve. You have to pay attention. So one of the things I started paying attention to, I was like, wait a minute, I'm here freelance writing, right? Which is cool. I loved it. I was making good money doing it. Um, but I know people who are brand ambassadors making way more money than me for less work. What's going on here? Right? So I was like, all right, time to shift the business model. Right? So I started doing that. Or um, my desires changed. I was like, okay, well, I don't really want to do the freelance writing thing anymore. I want to go more into um, coaching and consulting and teaching and these things that I love to do that I put on the back burner for the safe money, which was the freelance writing. So I started investing in myself again, putting the plan in place. And, you know, I'm happy. To, and that was that in and of itself was a big shift for me because I realized that it was possible for me. If it was possible for the people who were around me at that time, right? Why can't it be possible for me too? So I started moving in that direction and I did what I had to do. If I had to spend money, I spent it. If I had to invest, I invested. If I had to save, I saved. You know, if I had to show up and do something, I did it. If I had some like internal shadow work demon things I needed to deal with, I dealt with it. You know, I just did, I just committed to what I wanted. I committed to my desires and I stopped stuffing down what it was that I wanted for the quote unquote safe road. I That's love- never worked out for me. Right. I love that because so many people are traveling on the safe road and for good reason. Right. So some people listening do have kids and maybe a spouse or maybe it's just them and that they're the only person they could depend on and they just they have to make payments. Right. But to get to that next level does require us like 
at some point you pivoting or doing something different, especially if, if what you have right now is not what you want. Like you have, you can't continue to do the things you don't want to do and then have the life you don't like, and then just hope something will change. Like there needs to be action. And I know a lot of people, a lot of journeyers listening, they always like write in, they're always telling me that they do want to jump into full-time entrepreneurship or start their own business or maybe have a side hustle while they're building up you know, their skill set to make that big leap. So what kind of advice do you give for someone in that position who who wants to take on like this path, you know, wants to be more daring with how they earn money and earning extra money? Where do they start? Get help. Don't try and do it by yourself. That is one of the biggest lessons I feel like I have to learn over and over and over again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um you know, on different levels, if you're just starting out and you're in that phase, like you're, you're probably investing in consulting and education to get you there. Once you're at my level, like you're investing in like full time employees. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. So there's there's different levels to this, but it all comes down to the same lesson, which is you can't do it by yourself. You can't hold your vision alone. You just can't. Right. And you shouldn't have to. So mm-hmm. allow yourself to get help, ask for it, you know receive it, invest in yourself. You're worthy of these things. You are worthy of your desires. You are worthy of what you want to do in life, but it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you money. Learn to accept that. Right. You know, as you're talking, I'm nodding because even for me, you know, I'm doing this full time now and this is going to be just like the first time I've ever done something full time. And it's like really all on me to like make something work in a sense and so one of the things in the mind frame that I'm operating out of is that if I expect if I want journey to launch and what I create and do in this world if I believe it to be true that it will be successful then me spending whether it's for a coach whether it's for a system whether it's hiring help right so VA help or editing help whatever that is to allow me to focus on like the bigger picture and to do the things that matter Like that's going to upfront cost money. And so, but if I believe it to be true, like that I will earn or make the money that I want to make and make the impact that I want to make, then I have to do this upfront or I'll just be spinning my wheels and not getting anywhere. And so I feel like whether people, if you're listening to this and you're an entrepreneur and you know, you're kind of like struggling with how much to invest in your business or, you know, when to invest or even just personal finances. Like even if you are in a state where you do need help, um, and again, it doesn't have to be like you going out and getting necessarily a coach, but like investing in some systems, you know, whether that's a budgeting app or whether that is, you know, joining some kind of accountability. Uh, okay, everybody's got money for a book. Okay. Just right. go buy a book. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or yeah, that's the most simple, that's the most simple like thing, right? It's just like, you know, buy a book, invest in the resources that can help to help to, to bring you up to the point that you want to be, but you're not going to get there by believing that if you spent the money or because you don't have the money, you can't get to where you want to go. Yeah. And remember there's levels to this. Most people are probably coming to this podcast and they're, you know, where I was eight years ago now, Right. Or there where you were, you know, a few years ago where you have this thinking of the world, which is there's not enough. You're going to stay this way forever. Opportunities are not available. I actually just did a video for my brand and I'm like, we're told that opportunities are not available to us. We're told all the time, you know, we just turn on the news or or talk to your friends or, or just, oh, my gosh, it's just so much garbage coming at you all the time about how things are not possible for you. And we have to, so if you're coming at it, and this is the first time you're hearing this kind of a conversation, you're probably like, huh, what? Your ego is freaking out right now, probably. And some of you might also be feeling a little bit triggered. It's normal. It's okay. It's a part of the emotional process that you go through because you're waking up to a different kind of a conversation that is probably not a conversation that you've been privy to sometimes for decades, Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to like level up who you're around and the community that supports you on this. And again, it doesn't have to be in person because some of us don't have that in person support. Some of our friends and families are like totally not like into whether they're into the financial independence movement. I didn't have it in person for years, you know, and it was all online stuff. And that's okay. Like, I think that's the beauty. I keep saying this this is the beauty of the internet because it allows you to connect with people and you almost, you do have to change your reality. So there are some times where even in my business, I'm just like this, almost the things that I'm thinking about doing right now just don't even seem like plausible just because my immediate reality, like that's not what I see. But then I have my mastermind meetings or I'm going into like groups with people who I can connect who get that or even just like the FI groups or even my personal like, you know, journey to launch groups. And I'm just like, yes, see now, 
what? I'm changing. I'm shifting my reality. And this allows my mind to level up and say this, you know what? Okay. You were slipping a little bit because, you know, you're getting a little doubtful, but yes, of course this is possible. Yeah. And when you're so emotionally attached to something, it can get a little harder because everybody's bringing their own money dramas to the table. We all have them. You know, there's three areas where like none of us came out of childhood unscathed and it doesn't matter how good your childhood was. You still have some sort of trauma around these areas. Right. Um, Money, relationships and health, your own body. Right. Have you ever noticed how these are the three areas where we're the most screwed up? (laughs) Right. Like our, yeah. Mm hmm. You know, Um, and then on top of that, you have whole systems that are built on profiting off of your insecurities in these areas. So you see how like this, the world is not the thinking of the world is so backwards. And that's why sometimes when we say things like, yeah, you know, go get, you know, your nails done so you can go ask for two grand from a client. Sometimes that's like weird to people because it sounds so counterintuitive. But I'm telling you, I've had moments in my life where I'm like, I wonder if that big client would have come in if I hadn't spent the money over here first. And as you know what, too, it's not the act of getting your nails done. It's more that internal shift, the confidence of the person that went to go get their nails done. Right. Yeah, it's the feeling of it. And, you know, one of my mentors now, and I'm glad you brought this up so we can clarify this. One of my mentors actually brought this up recently. She does um, a lot of like marriage and relationship coaching and stuff like that. And she's like, it's unbelievable the amount of women who come to me and they're nipped and tucked and plucked and this and that and whatever. But then, and they spend thousands upon thousands of this, but then they don't spend money on therapy. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about that feeling of worthiness. And sometimes you might have to do some work around that first before you even feel comfortable to go get your nails done. I started getting a monthly massage six months ago. It's literally some of the best money I've ever spent. And in the beginning, I felt so guilty about it. I'm like, this is so frivolous. How dare you take off a Friday afternoon once a month to like go to the spa and enjoy yourself? You know, this is this is a terrible thing. And I'm not a mom, but I know moms have that conversation with themselves all the time, too. Right. Um, So if it's bad for me, I can only imagine what it's like for moms sometimes, you know, and I'm like, wait a minute. But. Of course, I'm worthy of this. I deserve to take a Friday afternoon off. I work my ass off. You Mm -hmm. know, I deal with people all day long, day in and day out. I deserve a few hours where I could like go get a massage, drink some tea and go in the sauna. It's not that big of a deal, you know, Um, and learning to be okay with that is a process, you know, and again, there's levels to this stuff. There's no way I would have done this five years ago, but five years ago, I was also way more broke than I am now. And I wasn't making as much progress as quickly. Right. And I'm glad you clarified that because there are levels to it. So you might not be in a position to go out and, you know, do the massages every week or every month. But there are certain little things that you can do that will boost your confidence, that will boost your self-esteem, that shows your like that you're signaling to yourself that you're worth it. Like I'm investing in myself because I'm worthy of it. And then it allows you to show up in the world in a better, more positions of power and confidence. Yeah. Or like from a business sense, recently I invested in a private office because we outgrew the co-working space, a full-time assistant, which I've been talking about for a year and um, an associate coach to help me with leads and teaching and all that kind of stuff. And it's scary. It's terrifying, you know, but all those things showed up in a week. Within a week, I was moved in and had the two team members I needed without having to have gone through like hundreds of interviews to find them or anything like that. And people are oftentimes asking me, they're like, how did you do it? Like, how did you do it so fast? How do these things just happen to you? And I was like, well, number one, I'm really on purpose and on fire with what I'm supposed to do in the world. The money's going to show up, right? And it always does. I've seen it so many times at this point in my life that I don't even doubt it anymore. That when you're in integrity and you're on your mission and you're living on purpose, it's a process to discover that, right? Things work out. That's number one. And then number two, realizing that, you know, I had up leveled in my life and in my business. So it only made sense for me to bring on more support so I could do the things that I love to do. I have an afternoon full of podcast interviews this morning or this morning um, now. And then later this afternoon, I'm recording for my own podcast. 
my company is still making money while I'm doing this. The only reason that's even possible is because I hired people. I saw myself as worthy of having the support. My ideas are worthy. The vision is worthy. The mission is worthy. I, I'm supposed to have, so not only am I allowed to have support for this, I'm supposed to. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and sometimes that's really hard for people, you know, and I've been at this money mindset game for a while. And that was one I had to deal with a few weeks ago. <laughs> And you know what, and what, and what I love about that is that again, it's a progression, right? So you might not be immediately in a place where if you have your own business that you're thinking about like having your own office space, but maybe the confidence or the next step for you right now is to just open up or start like the website that you've been thinking about starting and, you know, um, investing in the book that you need to read to help, you know, get more information about this business. Um, you know, so again, levels to it, but if you don't start, you won't then be in a position, like say you never started Amanda, you know, a few years ago, then you wouldn't be in a position now. Right. But so miserable. (laughs) Yeah. I think, I think what happens is sometimes because you don't know kind of like how to get to the next level because you see the ultimate goal and you're not there yet. So whether that's what, Whatever, with your finances or your business, you see what you want, but you mm-hmm. feel like you're so far away from it. And so instead of moving forward, you kind of keep thinking about how am I going to make this big jump to like that, that place that I ultimately want to be not realizing that just starting, you know, gets you there. And maybe it's not like you're not going to be where you want to be tomorrow, but it will get you to a better place because you just are taking action and action in alignment, action with integrity is, I mean, the, the, the rewards for that is boundless. Yeah. And when you're in alignment, stuff happens fast. One of the things where I see people screw up the most is they start overthinking and doubting themselves. Right. And then, so, and I had a recent experience, you know, I brought in this associate coach and she's helping with sales as well because the demand is so high. And, um, I was looking through a spreadsheet of people I've spoken to in the last 18 months. And I noticed this really interesting pattern. And the pattern was those who decided to invest with me, right, are way further along. Most of the ones who did not decide to invest with me because they overthought it, because they were scared, because this, this, that, whatever, this, that, and the third, most of them quit. Mm. I went to their websites. Most of the sites were down. Mm -hmm. So I think part of an area is like we just doubt ourselves so much. And I want to talk about that where the more you overthink, the more you doubt. I think sometimes we know what we want, but we get so hung up on like, how is this going to happen? Right? Instead of just allowing it to happen. As right. you pray, move your feet. Right. And you know what, you, as, you, as you said that too, you know, maybe the people who never like hired you, I mean, it was for good reason because they weren't meant, they, it, they weren't ready for that type of commitment and investment to get that work done, which is hence the reason why um, they just, their businesses are open anymore or whether if they found someone else, but whatever it is, they were not meant for you. But the people who were meant for you saw that whatever you had to sell them was valuable, that it was just a small investment in the return they would get. And I feel like that's the case for just like anything we want in life. Like it's okay to me, you know, failure or something not working is actually not a bad thing. You know, the the faster you fail or the faster you feel like something's not for you, then you can move on and try something else. Yeah. And that's a part of this process, right? I mean, people are so afraid of failure and I'm like, no, thank God for it. Cause I know I can just move on. You know, fortunately at this point, it doesn't take me so long to quit things that aren't working for me anymore, mm-hmm. you know, but there were times when it did, um, you know, and, there, and there's so many moments where I look back at like, I quit freelance writing six months ago. Right. And I was looking through the numbers and I'm like, I could have done this six months prior, but I was so afraid of letting that money go. And then, you know, once I let it go, well, now my revenue tripled. Mm-hmm. And that's another part of it is, is it's going to require risks and it's going to require things that are scary. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's all rooted in the same fear that there's just not enough money um, or that we ourselves are not enough or not deserving of the things that we see for ourselves. Right, right. So what are some I know you already gave some like tips we could do like the whole taking accountability and like looking back and what maybe how we were raised, how that impacts us. But are there any like I know you mentioned some books. Are there some books that you feel like were really helpful in helping shift your mindset or that you tell people to check out? 
Um, so my clients, I recommend this book to most of them and they all love it. Like this one gets rave reviews from all my clients. It's called Overcoming Under Earning by Barbara Stanny. I had to read that one three times before it really landed, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, which is okay. If you have to reread it before it lands, that's fine. Just show up and keep doing it and do it again until you get it. And I think that's the other thing is, um, and I guess this is sort of a, a cautionary tale is like, don't give up so easily. People give up so easily. They have no resilience whatsoever. (laughs) You know, they fail one time and they think it's over. And it's like, no, that's not how that works. (laughs) Right, right. Um, You know, so that one gets rave reviews from all my clients, which is Overcoming Under Earning. Um, There's a really awesome podcast that was recommended to me recently called The Successful Mind by David Nagel. Um, I think that's probably a really good place to start if this is the first time you're hearing this sort of a conversation because that that guy's just going to blow your mind. You're going to be like, whoa. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're going to be like, so everything I want already exists. I just got to figure out how to get there. What? (laughs) Right. Um, But just starting to expose yourself to different conversations. I remember when I first started my blog many years ago. People would ask me, oh, what advice do you have for millennials? I was like, stop watching the news. Like, if you do anything, just stop watching the news. (laughs) Um, You know, that doesn't mean you're an imbecile or you don't know what's going on. It's just like we're so exposed to so much garbage (laughs) all the time. You know, I have, like, Facebook newsfeed eradicator um, for Google Chrome. I make a joke. I was like, I have no idea what's going on in anyone's life because I turned my my newsfeed off. I only go in there to talk to the people I want to talk to. I don't give a crap what kind of drama you have going on. I don't care. Well, I I think that's so like helpful because that advice, it's like part news. So like, you know, like, yes, news stories on the TV and whatever through your, you know, those official Facebook pages, fine. But also personally, like you can also limit the noise that you see personally on your personal feed through your friends or through maybe like, you know, I like the, the entertainment accounts like you you can go to like if they make you feel bad or make you feel like you find yourself wasting time on those things and you realize you like you felt worse than you did when you went there then like you can also limit that too like you have control I think the whole purpose and point that we're trying to get to here Amanda is that where you have control over your life and yeah you have control over your environment you have right. control over what you consume you have control over what you decide to take on as a belief or not um you have control you, you, you have control over yourself after your own person. And it's so interesting. I have a client. She She's a childhood sexual abuse survivor, and she's built a, a whole platform um, around this. And she actually posted in, a, in the Facebook group for Persuade to Profit this morning that, you know, she asked for more money than ever um, at a university. And she's like, I've had a huge shift where before I would have been like, oh, let me discount or do this or that. She was my energy is completely shifted where I'm like, this is my rate. You go figure out how to pay for me. And she's mm-hmm. like, this is huge for me, <laughs> right? But we had an interesting conversation once where she she was like, people don't know their own authorship. They don't know, you know, the power that they actually have. They don't real. They don't know how to stand in their own truth, their own desires, their own boundaries, their own needs, because no one's ever taught them. So it's really interesting because, you know, as you go on this journey of money, I say money is one of the best spiritual teachers and probably therapists you could ever have because it'll force you to work through your stuff. You're not going to have a choice. And the cool thing with money is, you know, if you want to have lots of abundance, oftentimes the amount of abundance that you have is in direct correlation with things that you've worked through you know, your own traumas, you know, fears that you have, there's always some sort of a direct correlation. I interviewed someone for my podcast. She's a feng shui expert. And she's like, listen, when there's something in my life that's funky and out of alignment, the money stops coming. Mm -hmm. So we have control over that. We have control over our environments. We have authorship. So this in, turns into a journey of learning what that is and what that looks like for us. And it's beautiful. And I say that because money can seem so scary. It's terrifying, actually, because it, it triggers the hell out of people, right? Um, and it brings up a bunch of stuff about self-worth and all these issues, right? And if you look at it from the perspective of, okay, who am I going to become as a person as I go through this process? And I'm sure you can speak to this as well. The more you heal this area of your life, 
the it's not even that you become a bad person if you were already a bad person and you come into money you're just going to be more of a jerk you right. know like it just magnifies it you know but if you're doing this right and you're doing it in conjunction with like your own personal development I mean, I don't even recognize the person that I was five or six years ago. And I really like myself. I didn't like myself five or six years ago. Right, right. No, this is amazing, Amanda. I'm, I'm, I know that journey is will get a lot from this. So tell everyone where they can find out more about you, where they can listen to your podcast. So you can find everything at amandaabea.com. That's spelled A, B as in boy, E, L, L, A. There's freebies. The podcast is there. Um, articles are there. We've got years worth of stuff. You'll be very much entertained. Trust me. <laughs> right. And, and <laughs> just to clarify, to you have like also you have personal finance stuff, but then you also have a lot of entrepreneurial stuff like that. Yeah. Can help entrepreneurs, so my, like, yeah. Yeah. My older stuff is personal finance related. It's really funny because my audience has kind of grown with me. So we all started with personal finance. And then when I started shifting focus to making money, that's also when things blew up, by the way, Um, which I don't think is a coincidence at all because I started getting more in alignment than my audience did. Um, But a lot of the stuff more recently is more making money because I realized like, my God, like why so much attention on like depriving ourselves and sacrifice and this like I'm still walking around acting like I'm broke when I'm not like this is crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> um you know and I have one of my clients who actually said that she's like I'm nowhere near broke but I keep acting like I'm broke and then it just is this vicious cycle <laughs> um so there's a lot of stuff on on making money there's going to be a lot of more mindset stuff coming out in 2019 because it's been it's just so heavily requested at this point. Everybody wants me to talk about mindset. So that's going to be coming out in future episodes in 2019, which start dropping in January. Um, And then if you want to reach out on social, I'm constantly on Twitter and Instagram. Um, Those are our two main points. And that's um, just my name, Amanda Abeya. And we will be happy to have a conversation with you. All right. I will link all of that in the show notes so people can get in touch with you. Thanks so much, Amanda. Oh, thank you so much for having me to talk about this. I really hope you enjoyed that episode with Amanda. As you can tell, we both just, we enjoyed talking about changing mindsets, improving our mindsets, and then also earning more. You know, my big focus this year is how can we earn more money this year, Journeyers? How can you put more value on your ability to earn? How can you have that courage to know that you deserve and, you know, are probably not getting what you're supposed to be getting in the marketplace in whatever career field you're in? You know, it's okay to ask for more. And so I really hope you got some tips from Amanda about how to start like stepping out of that comfort zone you're in so that way it can help you towards all your goals. Again, if you want the episode show notes for this episode, you can go to journeytolaunch.com slash episode 79 and then at me on social media at journey to launch on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Screenshot that you're listening, share it with your family and friends at me so I know you're listening. You can hashtag journey to launch also. You'll be able to, if you click that hashtag in Instagram or Twitter, see what other people are talking about when it comes to the episode. I love when I click on the hashtag and kind of see what everyone has posted. Now I want to get into just some things with the Launch Club. That is my membership community that I launched last month in December. And so I did a soft launch, not, you know, I didn't make it a big to do, not yet at least, and got a really good round of members in the community and we are so excited last week we did our launch club planning party so we planned out our goals for 2019 we did an assessment of where we are and we had a good time doing that and this month in January we are going to have a credit expert come in and teach us all things about credit and so how can we use credit as a tool to reach our goals so I'm excited about that class and so if you want these type of classes these, these types of resources where we can dive deeper into what we do on the podcast but in a way in which you can 
can now like apply it to your life. You get more in-depth knowledge at a crazy, crazy affordable price, reasonable price. You can go to journeytolaunch.com slash launch club to learn more. I'm super excited to continue to grow the launch club. And like I say, you know, this is going to be my premier service um, to my community, to you. And so I'd like to see you in there from the beginning in the early days uh, before, you know, it gets big. I, I really love working with the amount of people that I have in there now, but I'd love to some more of you in there. So come join me, journeytolaunch.com slash launch club. Okay, I want to read a journeyer review. So this is a review left on the Apple Podcast app. And let me tell you something. I love reading your reviews. I love receiving your feedback. So this one is going to be from Gwen Julius. She or he, I'm assuming that's a she, says, I absolutely love Jamila's podcast. She has the best guest, gives the absolute best personal finance info. Her podcast is easily understood, and I love how she asks the nitty gritty questions I am thinking in my head. Love it. Keep up the great work. Will do, Gwen. And so if you do enjoy this content, this podcast, please, if you listen to this Apple podcast, just leave that review. I'd love to read it and possibly read it on the show. And until next week, Keep on journeying, journeyers. Journeyers.